Today I'm going to show you the 10 Japanese pantry staples that you need to make your favorite Japanese dishes at home. The first and most obvious is soy sauce. Now I know most of you have this in some form or another, whether it's in a bottle like this or whether it's in those little packets that you've got stuffed in a kitchen drawer. This is perhaps the most essential ingredient in Japanese food. I mean, uh, there's a flavor of ramen called shoyu ramen. It's, it's just based off of this flavor right here. Oh, there's some other things, but this is the main flavoring agent for that. And I have to say, without shoyu, it wouldn't be Japanese food. Next is miso. Now, a lot of you know this as the main ingredient in foods like miso ramen, miso glazed salmon, miso katsu, miso salad dressing, miso butter pasta. The possibilities of using this in a recipe are endless. It's full of glutamates, which are an amino acid that's responsible for that savory feeling that we get when we eat uh, cheese and butter and meat. Uh, we've kind of evolved to seek out foods that are high in glutamates because it's kind of like our mouth's way of saying, eat more of that, it's super nutritious. The next pantry staple is... Yes, it's great for soothing you during your crippling alcohol withdrawals, but it's also great for cooking. You'll find it as the prime ingredient in a lot of your favorite dishes like teriyaki, gyudon, make sure to check out my recipe, link below, sukiyaki, uh, udon soup base, it's in darn near everything. This is rice wine vinegar, and it's the Japanese choice of vinegar. It's a lot mellower and sweeter than something like white vinegar, which makes it perfect for the already subtle flavor profile of a lot of Japanese foods. This is of course the main ingredient in sushi vinegar um, and it's also one of the reasons why Kewpie mayonnaise is just so much better tasting than American mayonnaise. Speaking of sushi vinegar, you can see how it's made in this video that I made a while back where I made this really delicious salmon rice bowl. Next is mirin. Now you'll often see this described as a seasoned cooking wine and heck I've even used that phrase a few times myself. One teaspoon of mirin, a seasoned cooking wine, but it's so much more than that. Like if you compare it to sake, you can see that there's a huge color difference between the two. This is fermented in a mixture of shochu, which is a liquor that's stronger than Japanese sake and koji, which is actually the mold used to turn rice into sake. Now, as it ferments, it creates these natural glutamates. It develops that complex sweetness, that nice uh, little bit of alcohol flavor in there, and just that really nice savoriness. And it really is an indispensable part of the Japanese pantry staple. Now, here is kombu, and it's essential for Japanese dashi, which is uh, the quintessential Japanese stock. It's full of umami and uh, rich savory flavors. And this is the backbone of all dashi stocks in Japan. Um, this is responsible for a lot of those really nice savory flavors that you get in things like ramen, udon, and Japanese hot pots. Now, if kombu is Batman, then katsuoboshi would be its robin. It's literally fish jerky. It's made by smoking and drying the fillets of fish, traditionally skipjack tuna, um, and then they shave it paper thin. Now this and kombu are high in the compounds disodium inosinate and disodium guanylate. This part gets a little bit complicated, so I'm, I'm just gonna break it down for you a little bit. When you combine disodium inosinate with disodium guanylate, uh, they create a compound called disodium 5-ribonucleotides, which enhances the effects of glutamates, both um, naturally and artificially occurring. Basically, these two make foods uh, super yummier. Moving on down the line, we have sesame oil. Now, this is usually made with toasted sesame seeds and it has a great nutty flavor. And a lot of people call this a finishing oil. That means you add it at the very end of a dish. You don't really cook things with it because it can become acrid if it's uh, brought to a, a certain temperature. Now, one thing you need to know about this is that uh, when you go to the grocery store, you'll often find blended oils labeled as sesame oil. And that means that they take some parts of sesame oil and they combine it with other kinds of oil like canola or corn oil. When you go to the store, check the back um, and make sure that it's 100% sesame oil as that has the best flavor. This is nori, which is another type of seaweed. Uh, actually, it's made from red algae, which is dried and then pressed into sheets. Now, it's usually used for wrapping up things like sushi, 
uh, onigiri, and it's also used as a condiment if you cut this into little strips and sprinkle it onto food. Rice should be the very first thing on this list because it is the foundation on which Japanese meals sit upon. The word for meal in Japanese literally translates to rice. Now, when it comes to the variety of rice, that's where it gets a little tricky. You see, Japanese rice is a shorter, starchier grain compared to something like basmati or long grain rice or wild rice. Because of that extra starchiness, it can be molded and shaped into things like triangles for onigiri and easily picked up with chopsticks. So if you're planning on making a Japanese meal, especially something where the rice has to hold a certain shape, then make sure that you're using short grain Japanese rice. And make sure to check out my recipe playlist over here where I use all of these ingredients in one way or another to make some awesome Japanese food. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.